Hello friends. This side Rahul Magan here is a group chief executive officer of Treasury Consulting and also a venture capitalist. And today we are going to shoot a very deliberate video as how to structure how to structure a private placement program deal. So basically, please be know that private placement program deal is not for everybody. But as you very well understand that we are a very good player in the private placement program, and we are getting you know. Lot of requests every day where people come to us and say that we need to get it structured. So today we decided to shoot a video where we're going to let you know what exactly is the structuring of PPP deal and how exactly it works. Of course, not everything because there are a lot of things which are on the consultancy note, right? How exactly it works and how basically what are the ten things we have to keep in mind before we take this further. Now, before entering into the private placement program deal, I would like to take an indemnification here from all the users. There are two indemnification. Number one, you are not requested. I repeat, you are not requested to call Treasury Consulting if you are here to waste our time. There are many people who are calling us every day, and they tend to believe that they write to us, they message us, and they, you know, they just let us know can we have this, can we have this. Please note very carefully that. There is nothing complimentary which we have as far as the our private placement program desk is concerned. We have meeting charges; they are in dollars, so it is not complimentary in nature. And the minimum meeting charge for per hour is six hundred Singapore dollar. I repeat, six hundred Singapore dollar, and that we will rising to maybe seven hundred and eight hundred Singapore dollar before December two thousand nineteen. I once again repeat that before shooting this video, that there is nothing complimentary which we have in this video, in our PPP desk. Everything is paid. Our meeting charge starts from six hundred Singapore dollar per hour per person to two thousand four hundred Singapore dollar per hour per person, and it is there on our website. So kindly, we are requesting you. You are not supposed to waste my time. The writing on the WhatsApp that we need, that we need, that everything is professional. There is nothing complimentary there apart from these videos. Today, I am going to open little secrets about the private placement program, and these secrets are going to come in the public domain. I know that there are many people in the industry those who do not like that, but yes, I need to share. So there is a tendency that private placement is nothing but a program which is being uh, run by a prop trader. Example like us, we are running our own desk, right? It's not always true. There are prop traders in the market like me, and there are the banks also. Those who are into that business. I'm not here to quote the few banks because two banks I know personally in Singapore and one in US and one in Europe. Those who are into that business believe that. Today in the private placement program, you have the banks also in that business, and trust me that even the best regulator of the globe. I hope you would have guessed that the name of that regulator. Even the best regulator of the globe do not have the information that they are running a private placement program desk. Everything is happening under the domain of that regulator. Maybe they are aware, maybe they are not aware. God knows, but that is what the scene like now it is. Another thing is that when you are talking to the private placement program, you are generally talking with somebody who understands the credentials of the trade. But what happens that when you talk with the private placement people, they do not offer you everything in place because they are fake. Now, you know, uh, I would like to say that example. There is a the, the number one fraud which you are having is that you know. So generally, the investor is from India. You know, they are from Bangladesh. They are from Europe. They are from US. But people say that the fraudsters say that they have a company in Dubai or probably Hong Kong. They first see where the investor based out. So the investor is based out at US. They will say they have a company in Hong Kong registered under HKMA, or preferably they can say that they have company under Singapore. But they will not tell you the ACRA number. ACRA is like in India, you have Monetary Authority of Singapore. You have in uh, Hong Kong, you have Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Similarly, you have ACRA in Singapore, right? So they will not give you the ACRA number. They are very reluctant in in terms of giving you the ACRA number. But they will the time you tell that you are from US, they will tell you they are from Hong Kong. If you say that you are from Hong Kong, they will tell you we are from US. And they will give they will definitely not share their company information in domain. They will say we have a trader. The first fraud in private placement program. Every private placement program desk do not cannot be run by one trader. It is a set of traders. 
so you do you cannot run one from one trader reason being there are a lot of markets to cover you would be covering the asia pacific market you would be covering the us market you would be covering the european market there are many markets to cover and if you and one trader practically cannot cover every market so you need a lot of people around those who can cover that but the first point is that when you ask these people they will say you have one trader this is the first mistake people are entering as the first trap which they are setting alternatively you need to ask these people that is your desk is being supported by the bank which is generally fcm future commission merchant like our desk is not been supported by the bank and neither we are interested reason being because if it is being supported by the bank it is too much too much micro management is happening by the bank so take an example of let's say these stock banks in the world like goldman sachs credit suisse standard chartered barclays dbs bny enz oce uobcd you know i will just just give you one one hint before winding up this video that out of these bank there is one bank who is running a desk here in one location you guess so you have one bank you can look at the name you have a bank who running one desk in that location one of the locations and even the regulator of that location himself not aware about that so i have given you answer of guess now guess it and now guess it out and see Anyways, we are going to disclose. We are not going to. We are not going to disclose that. But we have just given you the hint. So once you have a uh, basically FCM, future commission merchant who is supporting you, you know, there are a lot of action which is there. A lot of micro management which is happening. It is pretty tough. They they involve themselves in all these activities where they should not, and that is not done. That is completely not done. To be honest. Then what happens when every top bank is having a trade desk, and that trade desk has been managed. you know uh i would say it's separate desk like take an example of dbs development bank of singapore is the largest bank of singapore largest local bank supported by the government of singapore and one of the fantastic banks we have we also have an account in dbs but every bank is having a one desk which is trade desk the way they manage the front office they manage the trade desk but now things are little bit changing at a very fast level but unfortunately this so called trade desk which are around you they do not they will not they will definitely not let you know how many i am not sure how many of people those who are watching this video they ever got an opportunity to come to singapore even if you come to singapore you know that it's a singapore based company our company you come to singapore and spend a considerable time as far as the singapore fintech festival is concerned so generally fintech festival is happening in november like last year it was i think it is 12th to 16th and this time it is 11th to 15th so this year date has confirmed it is 11th november 2007 or uh, 2019 to 15th november 2000 uh, 2019 three days it's going to be supported by the government and two days supported by the bank but you must be thinking that why in a private placement program we are discussing about singapore fintech festival we are discussing about singapore fintech festival because in the last two days so the first three days 11 12 13 It's being by the government. You have a fintech festival at Expo, which is near to Changi. You can see that no, not near to Changi, little far from Changi. Changi is the airport actually, and uh, you know, 14, 15 is by the banks. Now the last year, tell you a story, which is of November 2018. Not a very old story. We were being invited by Standard Chartered Bank, and Standard Chartered Bank showed us their platform. Now I'm not talking about the PPP platform. They showed us a platform wherein they said Rahul. the letter of credit the bank guarantees which standard chartered bank has now uh, basically they are getting it online i asked them okay what are the various terms and conditions you are making it online how comfortable your platform is being with another bank so example if i'm talking about standard chartered bank which is right here so you are connecting with which banks which is might be uob dbs ocbc uh, you know might be bank of america goldman sachs and and another they have given me the uh, entire explanation but i am not here to give you that explanation because this is outside the context of that discussion but to cut the long discussion short standard chartered bank trade finance is completely being online now there are a lot of reports in the public domain which do confirms that there are multiple top banks of the globe including singaporean and non singaporean top banks of the globe who have made their trade finance desk online but what is the scene why we are discussing that you know there are idiots in the market who will tell you that okay you wanted to have a bank guarantee you wanted to have a standby you come to that bank we will uh, he will issue he will issue a letter 
it's a letter of comfort you can visit the bank and so boss please you are in 2019 trade finance is completely online now today if you wanted to have a bank guarantee from dps today at 12:30 24 22nd march 22nd march at 12:30 they will mail you they will just do the uh, swift transfer and at 12:35 i think it's much lesser than that somewhere 12:32 the particular bank example uob would get to know that there is a bank guarantee which has been shared by dbs on behalf of a client of the uob so please try and improve yourself that gone are the days when the bank used to have such kind of bank guarantees in the or the stand or the lc in, in, is in the that format yes at the same time i would like to take an indemnification that standby letter of credit still not been digitized or on, on the blockchain as yet it might take some time that is the reason why when you come into a bank for an instrument you first thing you need to see whether the bank is having the trade finance facility online or they do not have a online trade finance facility but 99.99% people are little reluctant to understand that they do not know it about that and they fall into the trap of the people who tell them we will give you the letter of comfort and so on so for somebody bank come and meet you and so on so this this will never happen third thing third thing is that banks are ready to issue everything provided you have the credentials you know a lot of people come and say that this bank is not that level this bank is not that level this bank cannot issue that boss how can you say that this bank cannot issue that banks are just like the merchants the more money you have in your pocket the more comfortable the bank is generally the trade finance desk of a bank is issuing standby letter of credit direct pay letter of credit letter of credit bank guarantee standby bg revolving custody and credit plan the list is pretty large but in 99.99% parlance the mindset of the people are restricted as far as this sblc is concerned and lc is concerned well i'm not sure that why the mindset has been restricted here but banks are issuing almost every instrument you let the bank know provided you have the credentials in place alternatively what happens is exactly there is another important thing which we need to understand while there is a difference uh, of course we, we will talk in a later video that the process the bank issued lc and bg it is not the process they issued sblc it's tend to believe that the way bank issue sblc is as same as the issue lc and bg no that is absolutely incorrect because the balance sheet impact of sblc in a bank is much different than you have lc and bg but there are many intelligent people oblique fraudsters we have in the market who tend to believe that standby and lc and bg are issued in the same way definitely wrong alternatively standby as lc requires much more time effort money and cost to issue compared to lc and bg the same is the case case with another instruments also and another biggest fraud which is happening is that which generally comes to my knowledge is that when people saying i have a standby from barclays assuming i wanted to get this monetized the time people tell me that i i got to know that he is a fraud reason being once the bank issue the trade finance document the bank himself at the time of issuing the document asking you excuse me you wanted to get this monetized or not but if you do not want to get this monetized bank will say okay thank you but if you want to get this monetized let me know right away once you say yes then bank would be asking about your preference exactly how you would need 1037997760 it might possible that you need 100% in 103 for mt103 means example today you have a standby of 100 million euro and you are talking about dbs it issued by dbs if dbs get this monetized so they dbs is having ltv of 75 to 80% so basically out of this 100 million you will get uh, 75 to 80 million and that 80, 80 million completely you get in 103 alternatively you can do 799 you can do 760 and there are multiple ways of getting this done one important fraud which generally i always uh, came up with people are coming to me saying i have let, let me give you a fraud we got an email from somebody he said that uh, 
he's from Barclays. He uh, he's somebody Mr. X Y Z from Europe, and he do have a uh, you know I think if I'm not mistaken standby from Barclays, and he need to get this monetized. I'm not saying that Barclays is as strong as DBS. I'm not saying their LTV is 75 to 80. Barclays LTV is closer by 50 to 55 percent, but if the Barclays has issued that standby, it's very easy to go to Barclays themselves and get this monetized rather than looking for the people around uh, around in Singapore and outside Singapore. This fraud is very very prevalent. All those people, those who are coming to you, that if they they have this person who will get this monetized, I have already informed number of time that 99.99 percent time the monetization monetizers are the banks. It's not. Of course, I'm not saying that not another platform. It is banks. So, provided you are issuing this freshly, and even if it is not fresh, this is off the run. You are able to take the help of the bank. That's it. Third fraud which we having as far as this uh, the fraud the monetization is concerned is the mod of that. I don't know when the world will learn that records and non-records is only in the history. I'm not sure about that because sitting today 2029, my hairs are black. Probably by my hairs will turn white after 10, 15 years, then the world will understand. The reason being, I have deliberately kept that records and non-records is a history now. It's only in the books. The banks have moved to the newer form of monetization, which is sharing. And maybe in a separate video we will discuss it is subject to consultancy. Records and non-records funding has completely dried out. The banks have moved to a newer level of funding which is known as sharing. But there are many intelligent people across the globe who still feel that records and non-records do exist. Insist. Then what happened? They will connect you to the monetizer platform. I fail to understand that. What is this? 99% of the monetizer platform are the banks. What? Why are you contacting me with a monetizer platform? If I am having an instrument, please be note that bank run the interbank trade finance market like the FX. If you today, if you sell dollars compared to Singapore dollar to say DBS, DBS will take a counter position with somebody and that somebody might be Citibank. And Citibank will take a counter position with Barclays and this sequence will continue. God knows who is at the fag end of the game and how did it cover. Similarly, once the bank monetized that bank, why banks would be able to monetize that? Because banks have that interbank platform, which nobody do have. So these, there is nothing known as monetizers platform. It is the bank's platform. It is the bank's those who are doing. So those who are coming to you and giving you a fraudster like, I know I am direct to a monetizer. This line is the most famous and the cash line which we have in this industry. You know, I would say there are multiple cash lines which we have in the private placement platform. The first and the most fraudulent cash line is I am direct to the principal and in 99.99% the principal do not exist and the trade do not exist and the instrument do not exist 99.99% second and most fraudulent cash line is I am direct to a trader who are you direct to a trader what credentials to have you are direct to a trader do you even know how the trading works do you ever saw Thomson Reuters and Bloomberg? Do you know the regulatory framework? Do you know how exactly things work? What do you mean you are direct to a trader? I am a trader. But I have hundreds of friends. They have no right to say that I am direct to a trader. What is direct to a trader? Third and most important cash line which we have is that I am direct to a monetizer. And I really hate that line. Monetizers are the banks. Boss, if you seriously go to a bank for a monetization, you might not know that they consume less than at least three, three and a half weeks and in case of Singapore, sometimes four weeks to only do the due diligence. If you take a standby BG and anything and go to the bank and say that I wanted to get this monetized, they need minimum three and a half to four weeks to get this monetized. And I know many intelligent people in the market, those who will say that you give me the security today and give me a front and get, I will give arrange monetization tomorrow. And if you come to us, we will say we need minimum four weeks for your KYC and that KYC is subject to charges, it's nothing complimentary in nature. So this is the third fraud. Fourth important fraud which we have is this. That you know there are multiple trade trade platform exists. Well, I do not want you to spare much time about it because 
This is something subject to consultancy that how exactly you can recognize whether the plate, trade platform exists or not. There are certain guidelines which we have in the market, not in the market, basically from your experience. You would get to know these are the credentials. If you check, you will get to know the trade platform exists or not. This we are not sharing in this video as this is subject to consultancy. Last but not the least, we need to appreciate one thing very clearly that once we are talking with the banks, we need to know that every bank is subject to credit rating. And that credit rating is being given by the multiple rating companies of the globe like Standard Poor, Fitch, Ikra and we have multiple like Morningstar and multiple. We need to appreciate that these credit rating continue to change over the period of the time. Sometimes maybe more than once in a, on a daily basis subject to the volatility of the market. Henceforth, all the trade finance instruments issued by the banks are subject to change. Their LTV, loan to value ratio subject to change. It's a very hard thing to digest, but we need to understand that when I go to standby, the bank was having to, uh, bank was having credit rating of AAA, but now the credit rating has been reduced to AA or it might be A, so LTV will fall. We need to appreciate that once we get that instrument, we need to have an eye on the credit rating as well. If we don't have that, that is our mistake. With this, I would like to warn you about few things in the private placement program. Last but not the least, private placement was reality, it is reality and it would be the reality. The only difference is in this game, the investor should have the thorough knowledge than the platform. Or might be you should have an equivalent knowledge versus a platform. This trade is not for the people where you don't have any knowledge. In case you wanted to talk, you have my mobile number 9899242978. You know my email rahul.magan at the rate consulting.in. You know our platform www.fixedincome.global. With this, we thank you.